Hello, everybody, and welcome to Good Stuff. Today we have a uh, a very unique and good guest, I would say, because he is a, he's a, he's become a really good friend of mine. Um, Bruce Hampshire is the director of leadership development of Provia, and also the founder and CEO of Toward the Goal Ministries. Bruce, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having me. Yeah, I'm excited to dive in here, Bruce, because, um, you know, we've been talking about a lot of things that I know you and I discuss a lot of. So there's going to be a ton that, that our listeners are going to benefit from hearing from you today. So before we dive into some of those things, just just tell us a little bit about yourself, <clears throat> you know, some of the background and and then just, you know, with Provia and toward the Gold Ministries right now, if you don't mind. Sure. Yeah, my my background leadership wise uh, is pretty varied. Um I had uh, my first experience in leadership um, in uh, the hardwood flooring industry. Uh, as I was coming through college, earning money to get to go to college, I did, in, did that in the summers, and uh, it was uh, pretty cool learning how to paint gym floors and this and that, whatever. Um, hung on to that, uh, moved into a few leadership roles there, learned how to do customer service, uh, learned how to uh, lead small teams. Uh, so kind of blue collar world, industry world. And then, uh, for 14 years, I was a congregational pastor in three different churches. Uh, so I was, I was led that direction. And then from there, uh, for the past about 10 years, uh, I've been involved in more in business in leading, uh, doing leadership, uh, development, uh, culture building, all that, uh, stuff within the business world. Um, a variety of businesses, and including a lot of time at Provia, um, which we can talk about in a little bit. And then uh, also, like you said, nonprofit uh, leader, founder toward the Gold Ministries. In that, in that world, we get into um, servant leadership training, developing um, mentoring programs, trafficking efforts, uh, a whole bunch of stuff that uh, God God has given us. Yeah, and such a such a unique thing once again that. <clears throat> excuse me, has gone on with Toward the Goal and been blessed to be a part of that, you know, just this past year. Speak into that just a little bit more for people that they know what exactly maybe it is you offer, some things that you're doing there. Yeah, so um, really how that started was we felt a call um, to reach out in the to our local communities, um, maybe not just under one umbrella of one church, but just, just the broad community. And we decided, uh, Jocelyn, my wife, Jocelyn and I, um, which is, by the way, has been awesome to launch this together and work together with a person like her. Um, just a terrific opportunity and uh, pretty cool. And, but with that, we decided to use our giftings and um, we just decided we're gonna meet with people. Uh, we're gonna form a nonprofit. We're not gonna charge. Uh, a, a lot of times people won't get help because they say, well, I can't afford it. So our heartbeat was that we would just be present and we would just um, and we, we would just be with them and we would just uh, go to other people and say, hey, could you get behind us and support what we're doing? That was the seed, if you will, which has led to um, just connecting with a whole lot of businesses, a lot of small businesses, a lot of leaders, uh, taking what um, we're learning and going into into uh, their environments, um, that's been powerful. One of the things that we're learning is that when we go into the environment of a leader and we're on their turf, it's pretty powerful because leaders really open up when they're comfortable and they're on their turf. Uh, if I would wait around in the counseling office, so to speak, and wait for them to come, it probably was not gonna happen. Uh, but when you go and meet them, so pretty cool, uh, exactly how Jesus did his ministry. So it's gonna work real well. We got involved then from there uh, with trafficking efforts, uh, labor trafficking, uh, sex trafficking, human trafficking stuff. Um, Jocelyn is a big part of that um, in Tuscarawas County. And uh, then in Garraway and, and Highland local schools, we have uh, established mentoring programs where we train mentors and then match them up with uh, a, a child or a student that the, that the school uh, provides for us. Yeah, and I think we could probably take all podcasts and just and just talk uh, about toward the goal. You you obviously know that 
Aaron and I support you, and it's obvious uh, that what you're doing is is having a great impact. So thank you for that, and not G you're my welcome. encouragement, but keep but keep going. Um, the two words that come to me, and you said them earlier, when I think of you, Bruce, is servant leadership. I, I just uh, I, I know nobody that that does it better than you, and and I know that you've had a great impact on me, you know, in my walk with that. And and as I've said on here before a couple times, Bruce, I think that is a game changer. You know, when, when you put that at the forefront, let's start by define what servant leadership means to you. Yeah, well, servant leadership at the core of it, it's all about humility. And it, it truly is. You, you cannot have servant leadership without humility. And, and really, in, in the way I see it, um, it's, it's humbling. Our, it's having a leadership um, it's having leadership responsibilities and then um, not hoarding those to ourselves, but use utilizing that and then, and then empowering other people to be the best that they can be. So if I'm leading you, I'm going to not just delegate things to you that I don't want to do, but I'm going to empower you to become who you are. And and it's, it's, it's just a powerful thing because I kind of come underneath you and I come beneath you and I lift you up and I get you to where you need to go. And I'm just glad to be along for the ride. The other way that we can look at leadership is more of a dictatorial thing where you're working for me, you do things for me. Uh, I benefit the most, you benefit a little bit with a paycheck. Uh, but we all know that there's a, there's a shelf life, very short shelf life to that. And so um, servant leadership at the core to me is, is living out humility and empowering others uh, in their lives. So for the ones that aren't able to lead that way, you know, uh, how, how do you get them to understand how much more beneficial it is? You know, you mentioned like the dictatorial way, you know, and we're so driven by results and, and just get this done. You know, how, how do you convince a person that when they see that works, you know, how do you get them to convince that this would be that much better? Yeah, that, that's a very good question. Uh, in a real practical sense, um, just modeling it, I, you know, sharing the why, you know, the Simon Sinek why behind the what, sharing the why it's important, modeling it. And uh, it's been interesting. Uh, I know for me, um, there, there have been leaders and business leaders that I've met with uh, who don't quite understand it. And so in a very practical sense to kind of answer your question with, with a practical answer is there's this idea of retention. So if, if you do this, if you try this, if you actually take the time, deny yourself and empower others to be their best, if you actually try to do it and you do it consistently over a period of time, your people will not be quick to leave. And so I always say, make it really hard. If, if God's calling someone else to go somewhere else, that's great. But make it a tough decision because you're leading them so well. And uh, so business people love the idea of retention, keeping, the, keeping good people and keeping them on board because it costs a lot to have that turnover. Uh, so in a very, very practical sense, um, that's one thing that I, that I have approached. And uh, here. Here's the deal. So persons that have authentically um, done this and tried this, um, I know of maybe in 10 years, I know of maybe one place that did not thrive and prosper uh, having implemented servant leadership. I, I, I believe that that's strongly in it because I've seen it. So, so where did it start with you? Like, can you trace it back to this is how you've always been? Was it how you grew up? Did it, was there a shift at some point? Where did that, where did that begin? Yeah. Um, I have always been, my inclination, I've always been um, kind of that person, uh, a, a listener, just, just kind of coming alongside of people. Um, and just trying to be there for them, even way back, uh, way back in the day, um, kind of my nature. But it really landed for me when, uh, you know, I was in the church world, and I, and I was pastoring, and I enjoyed a lot of what I was doing. Um, but there were some limits I couldn't quite figure out 
what that disconnect was. And so really what I did was um, I searched the scriptures and I, my, one of my life verses is Philippians 2, 3. And it talks about servant leadership. It talks about, about placing yourself underneath someone else so that they can be lifted up. And it's exactly what Jesus did for us. So I just dove into that thing. And from that moment on, I just did a real pivot, honestly, around that verse. And I thought, you know what? I'm just going to do this with the people in my life. I'm going to not make it about me and promoting me and getting myself to where I need to go. I'm just going to try this. And that was about 12 to 13 years ago. And uh, I am more convinced now than ever before. So that, that, was, that was really in the midst of my pastoring. So do you think it's based on what you're saying? And I know based on my own personal experience, I don't know that it's necessarily something you're born with. I do think some unique leaders might have some of these and can exhibit them just naturally. But it's also something that if you're not born with, you could pick up on. You're confident in that, correct? Absolutely. Yeah, it's, it is something that even, even if a person has not had this modeled and is, is very uh, maybe pragmatic and, you know, like, very orderly with how things need to be. This is absolutely adaptable to that. Um, by far the preferred way to go. The interesting thing is there, there has been kickback a little bit with, well, if I lead this way, then I'm just going to get walked over and, you know, I'm just, you know, a servant, the, the reality is a servant leader is a super strong leader. They're, they're humble. They have a quiet strength. They don't let people push them around, but they're very confident and secure with who they are. And, and because they're so secure with who they are, then they can empower others to do it and not be threatened. So a person, anyone can do this, but, but they would initially have to get past the insecurity. And because if we're in, leading it within, in an insecure way, um, we're going to be threatened uh, by people passing us up, even if we are the leader. And I guess two things that I would think of immediately, Bruce, that 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 conflict with this or make you want to go is is the other way is that pride and that ego. Would you would you agree that those two are 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 killers for this servant leadership, if you will? <laughs> yeah. Yes, absolutely. The, the the thing with pride is so pride always elevates and overlooks other people. Just think about that. Pride elevates self and overlooks everyone else because I'm on the top perch. I'm surveying my kingdom. I'm up, I'm up there. But the higher, I like to say this in, in a couple talks that I give, you know, the higher that you keep stepping up on that, on that ladder, when, when you miss a step because you're human and you fall, it's going to be a crash, yeah. right? So pride always goes before a fall. And so pride is the exact opposite of humility, in my view. And humility always bends the knee, and, and uh, pride always climbs the ladder. So it is an enemy, yeah. Yeah, that, that's, that's good stuff for sure. Hey, let's shift a little bit to culture. I think around here, at least, um, I think everybody understands that Provia has an unbelievable culture, and you're a big part of that with what you do. Um, you know, what are, some, what are some things, some minor things even, that, that someone – can do on a daily basis, you know, to contribute to that workplace culture. Uh, and then I'll have a follow up if you don't mind. So start with that if you, if, 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 if you could. Yeah, well, culture, uh, to me, really, culture is really, um, it's not so much the, the poster on the wall, or the words on a piece of paper, but culture is a feeling, you know, culture is what you feel. Uh, when you walk into a place of business. Culture is what you feel when you watch uh, a basketball team out on the court. Like you can just show up and watch how they non-verbally communicate and you know, all that, that stuff. And it, it's, it's truly a feeling um, and, it's, and it takes, takes a lot of hard work. Um, the, the things that, that we found to be very successful over time is to intentionally look for ways for people to get to know each other, intentionally look for ways for people to connect. 
not just come in, do your work and leave, but to be super intentional about, we would call it holistic care, caring for every part of your coworker's life. So we talk a lot about um, focusing on our internal customers more than our external customers. And that's a huge part of culture. So we always say at, at Provia that, you know, if we are, if, if I am serving you, if you're my internal customer, if I'm serving you with stellar performance and, and I'm getting your repeat business, the external customer can't help but benefit. What happens a lot of the time when culture goes bad is the external customer is more important than my coworker and I'm willing to throw my coworker under the bus to save my own butt. So there's a lot of illustrations there, but to answer your question, it's, it's viewing, it's viewing that coworker that you're with so high and, and of such value and worth um, that no external customer is going to get, get better treatment than that person sitting beside you. Yeah, that's amen to that. That's that's extremely well said, and I couldn't agree more with you. I think there is just such a, a, a that's, that's a major powerful statement that I think if people can really insert into their business, insert into their family life, their teams, it's it's gonna absolutely it's gonna yeah, it's gonna trans transform them. So I guess what would you say then are some this this takes a while. This is difficult, and there's obviously mistakes that are made along the way. What are some common mistakes that people are making right now <clears throat> that you've seen in, in terms of them trying to build that culture? Yeah, I, I think one one mistake would be not to take the time to uh, prepare for it. Um, this is not necessarily something. Hey, well now everybody, what we're doing is we're going to do this servant leadership thing and. But it, it's a it's a cultivating process. It's it's a it's a slow bleed as you begin. It's it's um, you know we did a lot of meeting with um, with the small small groups. Um, you know I, I kind of took that model from the church world, and there's a lot of connection. You know if uh, we would take a person from marketing, a person from customer service, a person from production, an engineer and bring people around, uh, you know, a conversation. And it took some time, but once we all understood each other, you know, those, those disagreements are much easier. Um, it, it's much easier to take those disagreements and just understand that this person is not against me. This is just a, a, a problem that needs a solution. So to answer that question specifically is not enough, um, lead time, not enough preparation, not enough um, patience to, to let this happen. Because this is not like flip the switch. Um, I, I, and, and, and it's right there. You know, Perbia has long been um, a company that has had solid leadership from Bill Mullet on down. And so they were in a, in a, in a decent place when we first started this stuff. But even then, it took a couple of years to infiltrate and to get it to the place uh, where we're at now. Yeah, and some people want those quick results, that instant gratification, like that internet, you know, and it, when it doesn't come, they kind right. of bail. But yeah, I second everything you're saying there. I, I think a lot of people, a common mistake to me is I don't have enough time, but they don't create that time. Whereas if they just did it, then they yeah. would have so much more time at the end. So you, you're around a lot of good leaders and you're a really, really, really good leader yourself. Um, is there a certain trait or traits that you could identify that make these people special? That, yeah, one or two jump out to me. Um, and, and, and the one I want to share here as I'm thinking about it is, is seemingly simplistic, and yet it's rarely lived out in, in its dependability. Mm. It's, it's being a dependable person. It's being someone that that uh, other people can rely on. Um, you know, we, we can say a lot of things, um, but if we don't have action behind it, if we're not dependable, um, one of the things in in, in the past that I that I've said with dependability, you know, if 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 they can't count on you, they won't need you. You know, if people can't count on you, they won't need you, and you can have the best of intentions. And so I think 
I think dependability uh, is absolutely uh, a trait that that all of us need to, to have. And, and here's the deal. So if the leader is not dependable, if the leader is all over the board, uh, if the leader is not consistent with their moods, with their um, behaviors, it's not going to work because everyone else is going to try to figure out, you know, hey, is this a is this a good time to is this a good time to talk to to the boss or not? You know, is this you know I, I call that sunny and seventy five. You know, it's creating an environment of growth, and so. You know, am, am I am I living? Am I dependable enough? Am I consistent? And am I reliable every single day? If you come to see me, and and, and we talk, am, am I offering you a sunny and seventy five environment? You know, anyone can walk into a sunny and seventy five degree day. I, I hope without complaining. Uh, you know, am I that kind of leader that I'm that dependable that you could do that any point in time? Or do people need to sneak around and wonder? Um, if it's a good day or not for me. So to me, sure. number one trait is dependability. Yeah, you're, you're exposing my younger years as a leader, Bruce. So uh, I wish you would do that. <laughs> I, I, I used to tell the guys, you know, all, there is all those abilities. There's dependability, reliability, accountability. Mm -hmm. But I told them the biggest one for them to, in terms of players was availability. If they're in the training room, they can't play. That doesn't help any of them, yeah. right? <laughs> Excellent, yeah, yeah. perfect. I think one uh, common thing that I talk about on here that I'm just big on, I think we've had some conversation on this, is the older I'm getting, the more respect I have for habits more so than goals. Um, mm -hmm. what, what are some habits that you've built into your daily routine that, that, that are positive and, and that impact you in, in, in a positive way as a leader then? Yeah. Um, what, one of those would be um, something that I call positive gossip. And so, you know, with gossip, we all know how that works. We're all pretty good at it. We don't, you know, we never had to read a book. Here's how to gossip. It's mm -hmm. negatively, uh, you know, it, it's one of those things, uh, something didn't go away or someone else got the promotion, whatever. And so we go back around their, you know, behind their back and we talk about it and we gossip. We gossip a lot. One of the habits that I try to, to live out, um, consistently and that I've seen in uh, a lot of prospering uh, organizations is positive gossip. So what I would do is I would look for things that you're doing well. I would, I would point them out to other people. I might tell you about them. I won't, I won't always tell you about them. I'll talk great about you when you're not even around to hear it. Um, but I will, I will let you have it in a really, really good way to everyone else. And when you succeed at something, I'm going to let them know that you did an awesome job and that, you know, all, all this good stuff that's happening. Here's the thing that I've seen over the years with positive gossip. If I'm pointing that stuff out to everyone else, all of a sudden they're going to start to see you doing those things because they've heard, they've heard about you. <laughs> you know, they've heard about how, how you knocked it out of the park. They've heard of, and so I'm giving them an opportunity to also share the positive gossip. If I were to say that there was one really good habit of, of positive cultures, of growing cultures, of very successful cultures, it is consistently sharing positive gossip. Um, I don't know, that's just, that's just a cute little two words that are easy to remember, but that, that's, a, that's a big habit. Um, one other habit, just thrown in real quick, is, is understanding, this is, a, this is really important as a leader, um, I would say to understand the 50, 70, 15, 70, 15 rule, which basically says that 15% of the people that you have in your organization are top performers, 70% is the middle majority, 15% are what research calls bottom resistors, and what I'm learning myself and with other leaders, a really good habit to get into is to not spend your time debating those bottom resistors. It's spending time with your top performers who then can influence the 70% middle majority. And you can get that 85% up there much quicker than spending all your time with the people who are constantly negative. So those are really two habits that are non-negotiable um, that I've seen.
Yeah, I love those. I think the positive gospel one goes back to what you're saying earlier about modeling. You know, if you're modeling that, then other people are going to follow. And once again, exposing a weakness, if you will, in mind. I, what you just talked about with the 1570-15 as a coach and, and maybe coaches that are listening, I think this happens a lot, Bruce, when I've got my 12 guys and the last three yeah. are not buying in. And they just irritate me. They bother me. And next thing you know, yeah. I'm not pouring into the others that deserve it. So, yeah, I, I appreciate that. That's a really good one. What yeah. about you personally, too? What, what inspires you? What motivates you? What, what kind of keeps you going? Your why, if you will. Yeah, well, my why really is to um, things really started to the gears really came together when I when I figured out my why. And it went, went back to that, what I said a little bit ago about Philippians 2, verse 3. And really, that really was, again, that pivot that really started changing my trajectory um, and how I viewed things. Um, so my why really is to come alongside of other people who want to grow, who want to learn, uh, and, and to help them get to where they need to go. And so uh, leadership coaching, however you want to call that, you know, mentoring, um, different terms for it. But that's really my why. And um, yeah, I, I just get a lot of energy from that, um, a lot of encouragement from that. I believe strongly in multiplication. Uh, you know, scripture talks about um, teach, teach those who want to learn so that they can teach others so that they can teach others. And so it's that multiplication effect. And so, you know, if you, Kevin, if you and I are connecting and if I can help you at all and encourage you at all, you know, you're going to meet many people. I'll never even know their names. But if I could help you and spur you on and say, you know what, take that leap of faith, take that step of faith, you can do this, you know, we can do this together. Um, that, that's definitely my why, and that, that gets me up every day, um, keeps me moving. Right. Well, you're knocking it out of the park, let me tell you, so keep it up. Um, and then what about you in terms of your growth and, and how you're getting better? Are, are there certain things that, that you do? Yeah, um, one of the things I did many years ago, probably, probably 20 years ago is, um, when I was pastoring is I intentionally, um, joined, it's called the American Association of Christian Counselors. And so I intentionally joined them and, and, uh, became a part of that group for, it, it's really good stuff. And a big reason was to discipline myself. So, you know, every two years I have to have so many CEUs every, you know, I, I have to keep up my credentials. And so I kind of did that just to keep me disciplined and keep me growing and learning. And uh, thankfully I kind of got a good addiction to that, um, if you will. Uh, to this day, uh, I'm, I'm, I still have my credentials there uh, and it's really good stuff that's helped me. Uh, the other thing that I do for personal growth is I will always have, I, especially with some distance learning and some uh, on-demand stuff, I always have one or two classes or, or, or lessons that I, that, that's waiting. Um, you know, right now I'm diving into the 15 laws of growth with, with John Maxwell. And, you know, I've had that waiting for the last three to four months. Um, now I, I'm starting to dive into it. So always have something that that's there that's ready to go so do you have any any favorite books or podcasts or anything that you're listening to in general consistently or just to, that you want to throw out there i i don't really listen you know daily to a lot of podcasts or different things like that um i am a big fan of of, of maxwell uh you know a, a lot of his a lot of his stuff uh you know his background he was a pastor uh, he, he, he felt a call to the business world and business leaders. So there's a connection there. Uh, so a lot of, a lot of Maxwell stuff, um, uh, a lot of, uh, I, I love, you know, Seth Godin, Simon Sinek, um, those types of, of thinkers, Malcolm Gladwell, um, you know, outliers is an awesome book, just stuff like that, that, uh, really stretches, stretches my mind. And of course, you know, at the core of, of who I am uh, would be would be the Holy Scriptures. So I, I, I get into that, uh, you know, quite a bit and uh, learn a lot from that. Yeah, for sure. And and I'd have to put a plug in there for the, the book that you introduced to me that was a game changer. And 
Um, that was the, the halftime by Bob Buford. I actually just gifted that to somebody the other day around yeah. our, my age. So, um, but, but speaking of game changer, another book here, right? Uh, your, your book here that you wrote, uh, game changers. Um, let's just talk about that as we dive in, you know, or before we dive in just a couple quick questions at the end of rapid fire, if you mm -hmm. will, what, what made you want to write this? Yeah. So, uh, that was a couple of years ago and what happened was, I was just being immersed in all of this stuff that we're talking about, meeting with a whole bunch of different people, meeting in small groups, meeting in some just round table discussions and just all over the place. And, you know, when, when you're talking with people and they become comfortable and they start sharing wisdom and there's a lot of stuff going around the table or in one-on-ones. And I would, I, I, I say I had this, all this chicken scratch, that I was just like, hey, that's a good one, you know, or whatever. And so I, I was jotting all this stuff down and I told myself, you know, I need to get about a hundred of these and and get it and just just document them and just get them get it published and get it out there. And uh, I couldn't stop till I got to 400. Uh, but it was it was a large part due to uh, the hundreds of people that I was spending time with and learning from as, as well. So what it is, is just a bunch of, um, I, I call them game changing quotes or, or statements um, that are really good to, to, to walk through. I, I, I put it into, I think it's 15 or 16 sections. Um, I think there's 25 in each section and they're just powerful to, to, to talk through with a small group, um, just really to get you to think uh, about uh, just leadership and in, in, in life in general. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely love it. And I've, I've gone to it a couple of times myself. What, what did you learn the most by, by writing that? I think the, the answer to that would be um, that learning is never over. Like, like the depth of learning. So, so if you would get that book and you'd go through it and you'd, and you'd kind of unpack, you know, one game changer at a time, there's 400 like you can literally, you know, if you and I were get to get three other people together, five of us could sit down and we could just unpack three of those things for an hour. And, and the biggest thing that I learned through that was just learning is never, you're never done learning. And most of the time, your best learning comes from the people that you're spending your time with. So um, I, I claim to be no expert on, on really anything. Um, I just try to, to spend my time with people that I can learn from and hopefully they can learn a little bit back from me, but um, there's really no, no secret to that. Um, so that, that would be the big thing. Yeah, a lot to be said about who you surround yourself with, that's for sure. So we're gonna finish up here with a rapid fire, just kind of um, call it three pointers. I know you can shoot it a little bit here, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna dish it <laughs> off to you and let you knock down a couple of shots. Um, first one is if people could learn something or take one thing from this talk, what would you want it to be? I mentioned a little bit ago, Sunny in 75. If we do not create the proper environment for openness, for um, growth in our organizations, um, it's not gonna happen. So it's, I would say it's us creating a sunny and 75 environment that anyone can walk into our lives any day and we are receptive and we are also providing an environment of growth, shared ideas um, and, and the like. That would be, that would certainly be the one thing. Yeah, for sure. Now let's, the second thing, if you could have come over here and stepped into my shoes, what's something you would have asked of you that I did not ask today? Okay. Um, I would ask um, the question as, as leaders, you know, uh, how do you stay humble as a leader? You know, I talked at the beginning about humility and, and so in leadership, you know, a lot of people come to us for advice. A lot of people come to us for guidance. A lot of people come to us for wisdom. Um, how we handle that, that can either make us feel like we're really next level important, or, you know, if we are, if we are secure with who we are, you know, we take that in and we, we keep humility at the front and center and, and, and we stay grounded. 
uh, knowing that uh, it's not about us, it's about the people. So that's what I would ask. Yeah, I love it. And then finally, you know, just call this good stuff. What, what's something that you can leave us with some good stuff, whether it's during these times or, or just in general? I know you got a lot over there, but can you give us one, one good thing to finish here? These are good questions. Um, I would say um, no matter what, there's always hope. No matter what, there's always hope. And I think some really good stuff, if you will, is modeling the idea that, that um, we need to look beyond obstacles and explore the opportunities and pursue those opportunities. Um, I know you personally, Kevin, that that's what you've been doing. And I know other people, that's what they've been doing. And that's, you know, when we actually look at something and, and we see an obstacle first, you know, to acknowledge the obstacle, but then to see, you know what, there's so many opportunities beyond this. So um, that's my attempt at, yeah. at good stuff is that there are many opportunities beyond the obstacle. Yeah, I love it. That's great stuff. I mean, that's a unique perspective and I think dives in a little bit to resiliency, which I feel is a, a big thing uh, if you're going to be a leader. So in closing, Bruce, where can people find out a little bit more about you? Um, you know, if they need to contact you, this book, Toward the Goal, any, anything that, that you can let our, um, our listeners know about, please. Sure. Um, yeah, the best way to contact me uh, would be bruce at towardthegoal.net. Um, that's where, that's where you'll get me the, the quickest. Um, you can also go to, um, the, uh, www.towardthegoal.net website and, uh, you can see what's going on there. Um, if you want a hard copy of the game changers book, I can get you that. Uh, you can also download a free copy of PDF of the game changers book on the website. Um, but, uh, yeah, those two places are the best places to find me. Yeah, great. Well, hey, man, I, I, it was it was great to hear from you today. And I, there's a ton in here that I know, um, you know, as we challenge people all the time to take and, and apply it to their life in some way, shape or form. So I appreciate you, uh, obviously, and, and everything that, that you're doing. And uh, thanks for taking the time to come on here with us today, Bruce. My absolute pleasure. All right. Well, hey, you know, once again, just take all that and, and find out where you can fit it in your life, uh, especially the servant leadership, the leadership that I, I would start there. Uh, but until next time, good stuff.